Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another tutorial. I still have a little bit of a cold right now, but um, it's not not so much of a big deal. Today what we do is we bend the world. Now you're going to notice that the color, they change quite a lot, and that's because the new shader is not 100% done. We don't, we haven't done like all the lighting, but at least the world is bending. And um, something you could do is you could actually bend it in the other direction as well. Personally, I don't do that, but if you wanted to, you could have your game looking like this instead. So guys, this is what we'll be doing in today's episode, and without further ado, let's just get right into it. Welcome back guys, it is now time to actually bend the world. So this is quite a heavy job. Today you might not understand fully what's going on with the whole shader language, but it's not uh, that much of a big deal if you want to learn more about the whole shader language. You can look up the um, our tutorial right here we have on the channel. It's just like a beginning beginner tutorial on how to make shader in Unity using their language, of course. So if you want to look that up on the channel, you're free to do so. If you don't want to, well, just make sure you copy along because it is a fairly complex shader, but at the same time, it is quite fun to do. So we're going to go ahead and right-click anywhere in our project folder and create a new unlit shader. This one's going to be a curve curved weld or you know band weld whatever you feel like and we're also going to be creating a new material so the material is going to be atlas or it's going to be yeah let's call it atlas because basically this one is going to be holding every single object in our game um, as far as the albedo goes you'll want to be putting the atlas texture it should be the next one right here it should be right at the beginning now um, in terms of shaders we're going to be changing that in a moment. So let's go ahead and add the Ben Weld. Actually, not add, but double click on it so we can open it up inside of Visual Studio or Mono Develop. So the first thing we'll do at the very top here is by um, is going to be to rename our shader. Let's call it N3K or whatever your name is, whatever your handle is, doesn't really matter. Bend World. This way, it is going to create a folder and then. Uh, is going to be creating the actual shader name. So if we head back to the Atlas now, sorry, I'm going a little bit too fast, I just realized, but if we head back to the Atlas, under the shader, there should be your handle and also the name of the shader. Click on it, and we now have our shader. Right, so um, later on, what we'll have to do is go over every object we have and actually apply this, which is going to be a little bit of a pain, but it's not that much, uh, it's not that big of a deal, right? Back to the shader, what do we need in terms of properties? We're going to be needing an actual texture, so right, uh, we have it right here, the main texture. Other than that, we're going to be needing a uh, degree in terms of curvature, so curvature or band ratio or whatever you want. I'll just call it curvature and it's going to be a float. Now, um, if you've never done shader like ever, make sure you actually double check everything you write because a single mistake in a shader is gonna first make it break just like every other script but the debugger is not gonna let you know exactly where it is sometimes the debugger for the, the shader is really not that fun to look at alright so now in terms of the sub shader we're gonna be keeping that render type unopaque we don't want to be rendering anything uh, really alpha and now uh, in terms of the pass, I'm going to be removing the whole pass right here. We don't need that one pass. This is to render um, you know, only shader. And I'm not even going to define a pass since we only have one. Right, so we're going to start our shader with a typical CG program. That means everything I say from now on can be interpreted as the CG language. And this goes until I say and CG, just like that. So everything in between these could be used for CG language. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and start declaring uh, the, the, the actual values we have in property. So let's go ahead and say uniform, oops, sorry, uniform sampler 2D, which is going to be our texture 2D, and that is called main text. Make sure you don't do any mistake, just like it did. Has to be the same exact name as up here. Up next, we have the uniform. Oh, actually, sampler like this. Okay, cool. We're off a good start. Then the form float, curvature, and the intelligence really annoys me. 
Alright, so the IntelliSense is really annoying, but we'll try to deal without it. So I just added a little, little bit of space trying to um, read this properly. Let's go in the CG program. The next thing we'll have to do is create a uh, input structure for every single vertex we have. So let's do a struct input and here we're gonna say it takes in a float to UV main text. Now this is gonna be to draw whatever color is on the texture based on the UVs. Then right after we're going to be declaring the vertex shader. This one takes in a in out app data full I totally recommend you to go look this one up on the um, on, on the uh, documentation for the shader on unity.com because this actually means something and the fact that we named it app data full means it's going to get the full data out of the vertex. Um, usually what you could do also, there's like another option where you can define exactly what you want but we're just going to take everything we can. And since I'm here, let's lay down also the surface shader. So void surf input in, input is the name of our own structure if I can write it and in out surface output which you guess is going to be the output so we have our vertex shader our surf shader and um, vertex is where we're going to be doing the magic because you know vertex is the one that is going to be modifying the pixel location modifying the say the size of say the object whatever and surface is the one that's going to be applying different colors so how do we render the texture do we do it transparently? Do we want to add another color on top of it? Um, so this is to manipulate the geometry and this is to manipulate the color. Alright, so we mostly want to be manipulating the geometry because we, we're going to be making this bend um, the further it is from the camera. So we're going to start with a float full and let's get the actual world space. So uh, the, the, the actual coordinate of this vertex in the world space. So I call this world space and it's going to be equal to multiply the unity object to world matrix object to world again this is something you must not mistype with the actual vertex itself we get in the parameters all right so now we have this world space vertex let's adjust it based on the camera so world space xyz we're only going to be modifying these three is going to be minus equal to world space camera position XYZ and I probably lost you at that point if you don't do shader I probably lost you already so I feel like <laughs> feel like I'll just write the whole thing world space is equal to float full world space dot Z times world space dot Z which is making a square times minus the curvature hey just like this okay all right now with this line what we do is we reset X Z and W back to zero but now for the Y which is the only one we modify we make sure to apply a square root minus the curvature at this point we have a clean vector with the Delta position only in Y um, to modify our vertex so now we can say V dot vertex which is the one we have in out so if we modify it it's going to be changing as well in the game we're gonna say it's gonna be plus equal to then we'll multiply the world to object matrix once again with our new whoops world to object with our world space vector all right so this should be looking good already if we head back to the game uh, we probably do have some error we do have a syntax error at line 38 good thing they told me so line 38 are we missing are we missing a bracket we might be missing a bracket sub shader um, actually we are not missing a bracket I'm going to go ahead and write this uh, default surface shader real quick and then we'll see if we still have an error so have C is equal to text 2D this is to sample the, um, the main texture sample the UV of the main texture this one you're gonna have it by default uh, anytime you do a surface shader because it's basically just taking the UVs and applying the texture from the diffuse I don't think we need to define the alpha but I'll just keep it anyway right so do we still have an error right now 
Turns out I was missing the most important line of the shader and is to define what is going to be the surface shader and also what is going to be the uh, vertex shader. So make sure you have a pragma surface that says this is a surface shader using the Lambert lighting and then vertex vert and I'm also using add shadow here. I don't think you need to but from my reference it used it. I also put the LOD on 200 and um, also fall back to mobile diffuse. In case something happens, the game breaks, this, the actual graphical uh, engine breaks, it's gonna fall back on mobile diffuse. So having this done, our shader now compiles and we can now use it for anything. So we now have the material right here, the shader, let's drag them both inside of the artwork folder. And we're going to start applying it. So I'm going to be taking this, uh, we have the, the floor right here. This is going to change, it's not going to be always this color. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take the bend, or sorry, the atlas, and we'll apply it to the floor. As you can tell, our floor is now a little bit messy, it's not as good as it used to look. But this is what we'll be rolling with. And if you haven't noticed, we do have that slight, blend, uh, that slight bend going on. If we put our screen, say, on... Um, say directly on Z, you're going to see that it does bend. And if we play the game, it's really hard to tell, but it is actually bent. Now, what we have to do is we have to make sure that the other objects in the scene actually use that as well. And for some reason, I just realized that we're <clears throat> running through this thing like it's nothing. I thought we deleted this one. Yeah, so there's going to be some uh, something to play around with right here. We're going to have to go and play around with um, this actual collider and this segment. But before that, we're going to be applying our shader to everything. So um, let's head over to the gym. So under scene, let's go to the gym. And let's make sure we apply it to these guys right here. So Atlas on every single one of these. Now I know it's going to look ugly, but at the same time, um, we can't really change that just yet. Plus, these ones are not, are not being displayed, so it doesn't really matter. We're just going to be making sure that they do curve with the camera as well. And you can tell they do, because if we go a little bit further, you're going to make the collider pops. Actually, you know what? You don't actually have to put it on these, I just realized, since we don't see them. However, you have to put them on the coins. Now, um, I wonder if we can actually go, say, on the actual pieces themselves and just apply it here, see if it's going to affect everybody. Hopefully it does, so I'm going to pull out all the pieces. And just lay them down on this side. Plus, at the same time, it's going to help us populate the gym a little bit. So here they are. Now if you put the atlas on these, they're not going to turn ugly because they're using it as a base texture. They do have a little bit less of uh, lighting and we're going to have to fix that. A little bit less of uh, glossiness. But it's something we can tweak. Once you're done applying the new material to these, make sure you hit apply. If you don't hit apply, it is not going to work. and they're the changes are not going to be reflected. So make sure you hit apply on every single one of these. And even this one. Now I'm going to head back in the game scene see if they actually do follow the curve. And uh, everything seems like they do, they do follow the curve except the coins. You can tell the coins are floating there in the back. And now we have some really weird offset because when I saved I didn't have the proper um, position here. So let me go back, back in the gym. All these one before you save, it's really important that they are on zero. So zero, save, zero, save. Actually, you know what? Let's keep them in the gym. So I'll do zero, apply, then it's going to go back there with a nice control Z. Make sure I do that to everybody. And we should not have this weird offset once more. There we go, okay. Back in the game scene. They're now back on track. Okay, cool. 
So everything seems to be working now. The game obviously got a little bit more ugly, but we do have the bending uh, working at least. We also have to make sure the coin uses this bending because right now I see one floating in the very far right here. Eventually, when you get close to it, they're going to be matching. You know, they're going to be perfect for the gameplay, but you're also going to make sure that they don't. They don't do that unless you want to see the coins falling from the sky like this. It is really up to you. But uh, in my case, I'll make sure to actually fix those prefabs. So I'll head over in the gym again, drop some coin spawner. This one, make sure that uh, they all have the proper material on it, just like that. Then I'll hit, I'll put that back on zero zero zero. Then hit apply. Same thing with the coin line. Now they should be using my material and don't worry so much about the fact that our game doesn't look as good as it used to, lighting wise. This is because the shader doesn't actually do anything specific, like anything fancy in terms of lighting, but it is something we'll be fixing before we end the tutorial of course. Now um, it doesn't feel like it did fix them for some reason. Alright so now everything should be using the new shader as you can tell, this bend, this bends, everything bends. Um, of course, there is some kind of weird bugs we have the, with these segments, and also, I don't think we bend enough because I, I was able to tell that uh, the plane was ending a second ago. So we might want to go back and actually fix this real quick, actually increment how much we bend. We don't actually have to, um, to do that offline. When we modify a shader, it doesn't have to be offline. We can simply modify it here and it's going to be change everywhere. So, as you can tell, if you play with this number right here in the curvature, it's going to change quite a lot. Just a little slight change is going to make it really, really messy. So let's try this one. We can actually make our curve go up if we want. That's not against the rule. So if you like your game like this, you can actually do that. Now, um, note that in this case, my curvature is a lot, lot stronger than what we had before. So I'll be applying the Atlas material to our player. If you want, this could be your game. Um, you know, it's curved, but it's curved upward. It's really up to you. I'd like to have mine curved downward. So what I'll be doing is simply taking this number we have under Atlas right here, and I'll be making it positive. But that's obviously <laughs> too intense, so maybe if I do 1.5 or 0 0.002 that could work and we're just gonna have to find something to put in the air at the top here to just you know fill that space because that's that space at the top here is kind of empty or even better than that what we could do is uh, make a bigger rotation on the camera so maybe something like 30 this way the player can see a little bit more of the map And uh, with the, the whole bending of the world, you won't see that the meshes are spawning, you won't see that the plane is not infinite, you'll be able to hide all these things. Now, um, what I'd like to do before we actually end this episode is restore the color of the floor, because the floor is obviously a um, little bit weird, right? So, what I'll do is I'll simply create a new material under artwork. Actually, we do have one for the floor, let's actually use this one. And I'm going to drag and drop it on the world. Now, of course, this one needs to use our new shader, else you're going to be seeing stuff pop out from the ground just like this, and it's going to be quite weird. So let's take this floor, head over to Ben World, and I'm not going to be applying any texture on it. As far as the curvature goes, I think I've put 0 0.002, was that it? Yeah, so this is my floor now. Um, the only reason I wanted to change that is simply so we don't have a texture, right? If we have the texture, it looks like this. If we don't, it looks white, so it's not that bad. Of course, it is something we'll have to uh, change a little bit later on as well. Maybe add a color, um, a color picker to the shader so we can actually put a, a color on that. And that is where we're going to be ending today's episode. We've done the bending of the world shader, and uh, as you can tell, it's not perfect just yet. We have to add some lighting to it, uh, some actual lighting uh, effects so it doesn't look that bad. And we can go back to having a good looking game, but now with the whole world being bent. 
All right, guys, this is actually where we'll be ending today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, click on the video right now on the screen to head over to the next tutorial in which I am not quite sure what we'll do just yet. Maybe fix this mess or maybe just start um, closing the flow of this game. So adding the, the death menu, adding the replay button, all that kind of stuff. Hi, right, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.